Hey there, folks. I want to welcome you to kind of our uh, Wednesday night uh, Bible study time here. Uh, if you've never come to our Wednesday night Bible study time, uh, we're much more relaxed, which is why you see me here wearing my NFC championship and then ultimately Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles sweatshirt. Uh, but uh, Wednesday night, you, if, if you've never been, you got to come sometime when the weather's nice and warm and Dave Fox leading our Wednesday night singing, and he's just standing there with the T-shirt and his maple shade gym shorts and his flip-flops on. We we're, we we have a good time. Uh, but anyhow, um, I, I wanted to take this time to kind of encourage us uh, through the Word of God. We miss you. I miss being together with you. And uh, we are trying to keep in touch in many ways. This is one way. I was thinking about a uh, stand-up comedy comedy act that uh, Jerry Seinfeld does. Part of part of it, one little part of it, where he's talking about horses, you know, and he's you know kind of like giving the horses a voice and letting them talk to each other. And the, you know, the one horse is kind of you know he he's getting in the horse's mind, right? And so the the jockey gets on the horse and and off they go. The race starts. <laughs> They're sprinting in the hood. Hey, obviously, this guy wants to move fast. We're headed somewhere important, you know, and around the first turn and down the stretch and go around another turn. Eventually, you know, as he comes, you know, as they're headed to this spot, they come to the finish line. The horse kind of says, I don't, I don't know what we were in such a race. I hurry for you. We, we were already here, right? <laughs> you end up back where you began and kind of the horse verbalizing that. Gee whiz, like if we had just stayed here, we would have been the first ones here, right? You know, and I, I wouldn't have had to take all those, you know, the, all that kicking in my in my side. You know, it's just one of those funny routines, Seinfeld. You know, listen to it, get yourself a good laugh. Uh, but uh, reminds me of how in life sometimes ah, 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 we got to get past this next hurdle. We got to get around this next bend. We got to get through whatever the next thing is. And we face it. And obviously, right now, it's what? COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, it's been rare in my life where something has impacted daily living, uh, the response to it, as this. Um, but it's one of those things that, I, I get it. Congress, I think, is going to spend $2 trillion. Uh, by the way, it's not Congress's money. It's ours. So we're spending that money, right? And... Um, you know, I get it. Don't, don't, please, don't misunderstand me. It's a, it's a tremendous hurdle that we need to get over and and be victorious over. And and I, I, I understand that the, 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 the aspect of making it through, surviving it. The point I'm trying to get at is when we do, when we get past it, what do we have, right? What's there? Solomon in Ecclesiastes kind of talks about that. In the early part of Ecclesiastes, he's trying to figure it all out, right? We go over one hill, we come down, next hill, we come down. What, what's it all about? And he talks about searching for, for meaning in, in all sorts of things in life, in work and pleasure and this and that. And he, and he, early in Ecclesiastes, he comes to the answer of saying, all that my eyes desired, I didn't refuse them. I didn't withhold from my heart any pleasure. My heart was pleasured because my labor, my reward for all my labor. Th thus, I considered all my activities, which my hands had done and the labor, which I had exerted. And behold, all was vanity and striving after the wind. There was no profit under the sun. Solomon's saying, what profit is there if you make it through for the sake of just making it through? We put in a lot of effort for a, you know, education, earn a diploma, degree. When you're finished, what is there? Yes, an education for a job and all, but what is that job for, right? If you work all your life and you retire, you've retired for what what is it that you you have right that I'm trying to to get at 
It's always great to when you finally paid off a loan, right? Or or you survive a health crisis. These these hills, these things that we go through. But, but the point I'm getting to is is they led Solomon to say, okay, you know, we, we make it over. But but what is at the heart of life that I'm missing? It's what Jesus points us to with those pointed words, right? In Mark's gospel, uh, in Mark chapter eight and verse. 36 when Jesus says what he says so what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul See, Jesus is saying what what did we accomplish to get past to survive and he points to the real answer in the verse before when he says whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it See, Jesus is trying to point us to what the writer of the Ecclesiastes, Solomon, I think eventually he comes to see that there, there better be a an eternal treasure that's, that's, that's the foundation of our lives or else the rest of it feels like vanity, right? Jesus says, I offer you a life that whew, makes all of the, mountain climbing meaningful because it's eternal it's it's deep he says in john chapter 10 i've come that you might have life and have it abundantly Whew. what man that abundant life that's what's at the supposed to be at the heart of us as children of god and it causes us therefore to face something like covid-19 the coronavirus with, with not just the goal of surviving and getting past it, but rather, how can, how can the life that I have with Jesus, how can that eternal joy and peace that I possess, how can it be displayed through it? How can I perhaps, how might it, 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 it you know, kind of churn up the soil in someone else's life that I might be able to share with them what I have in Christ. In Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul is kind of revealing to us that motivation he has, where he's saying, uh, I, I, I just want so much to share, to let my life be a, a vessel, let it be a a, a channel that the, that the love of Jesus can be shared with others. And he uses three phrases to kind of describe that motivation. In Romans chapter 1, he says in um, verse 14, first, I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians. He's saying, in essence, to everyone. He's saying, my life has, there's an obligation on me to see every situation as an opportunity to communicate the beauty of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, the joy of Jesus, the peace of Jesus that can be ours uh, through a relationship with him. And he says, I'm under obligation to do that. Now, when we say obligation, we often, oh, I'm obligation, you know, I've got to pay off this loan. Or, but he, he's making the point of his real obligation is what? To the beauty of what God has displayed to him. Kind of like in the Lord's Prayer, right? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, right? We forgive because you forgave us. He's saying, I, I, I must share this good news with others because God graciously opened my eyes to it. It's a, it's a tremendous reminder of what we're called to. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Right? You shall be my witnesses. He says, look, I'm the light of the world. And if I'm living in you, you're the light of the world. You can't hide it under a bushel. There, there's a sense that if you've received that from me, you sense, Lord, I, I, I'm obligated because of my love to you to share that. Um, Hudson Taylor was a 
missionary to China. I remember my dad uh, reading a lot about him decades ago and sharing. And uh, Hudson Taylor devoted his life to sharing the good news of Jesus in, in China. Somebody was talking to him one day and kind of said to him, boy, you must really love the Chinese. And he did. But he says, no, I really love God, right? I think his phrase was, no, uh, not because I love the Chinese, but because I love God. In other words, my love for God is what I, I, I sense this obligation to give to others what he's given to me. Paul uses another phrase, right? He says, thus for my part in Romans 1 15, I am eager to preach the gospel to you. See, there's one sense of I have to, right? Or, or there's another sense to say, oh, I'm just so eager, right? I can remember being in, in grade school and, uh, you know, having my hand up, I had an answer to a question. Oh, 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 oh you know, oh, teacher, teacher. And I can remember on some occasions, I was the only one that knew the answer. Oh, you know, you're just, I'm just practically falling out of my desk chair. Teacher's going, anybody? Not, not going to call on me. Boy, I, I just did not have the uh, self-discipline. Uh, eventually, I would just yell the answer out. I would yell it out and, you know, spend a few moments after school at detention, right? But I was eager. I think about that gospel story when Jesus uh, heals uh, the family member and he tells them, I want you to keep this quiet. This was a, a miracle that I have displayed for you uh, to show you my value for you as a person, not for me to get elected to anything. Um, and he declares to them just to keep it quiet. But the, but the, the, the family member runs off. <laughs> Don Francisco wrote a song about it, right? I got to tell somebody. I got to tell somebody what Jesus did. Whew, that eagerness, right? I think about Christmas mornings with my kids when they were young. They're grown now. They're out of the house. I'm, I'm thrilled with where God has them. There are times, though, you miss that, you know, Christmas morning, the three of them sitting on the steps, right, kind of waiting to go downstairs. And they'd say, Dad, you know, we ready to go downstairs. You know what? I didn't say, all right, I guess I did promise you that Christmas morning you'd be allowed. No, I was like, yeah, <laughs> eager to, to, to give these gifts to them. Paul says, I'm eager to share the good news. He says the third thing, right? Romans 1, 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm not ashamed. Why? Because of the power of it. Uh, we, 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 we can't uh, be intimidated. Uh, we have to remember that we're sharing out of love. If someone rejects the good news that I'm that I'm sharing with them because I love them, I, I, I didn't lose an argument, right? I, we're not trying to win an argument. We, we, we are convinced that the gospel really does have the power to set people free from their sin. Whew. That's why Peter, when people were walking away from Jesus in John chapter 6, Jesus says, are you guys going to leave me too? And Peter says, where else would we go? You have the words of eternal life. You see, it brings me back to what I was saying. Where else is there to go? You climb that hill, climb that hill, accomplish this, accomplish that. But what do you have? What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? And yet contrast that with the fact that by the grace of God, he has opened my eyes to my sin. He has opened my eyes to the truth of the gospel that Jesus Christ took all the punishment for my sin and paid the price for it. And by faith in him, I've been forgiven. I have eternal life. Nothing shall ever threaten that. So I need to share it in different ways. But I'm going to pray for that. I'm going to pray that God gives us an opportunity to share it. I'm also going to pray for a couple of our 
prayer requests here. We have pink sheets this week. And uh, once again, we'll be sitting some in the uh, enclosure. Uh, I know it was locked a little bit last week, but we're trying to keep it unlocked, the glass enclosure off the parking lot if you want to come by and pick up a, a prayer sheet. But I want to I want to close us here with, with a little bit of time of prayer. All right? If you bow with me. Father in heaven, I, I do come to you and I, just this, this passage of scripture, all, all these verses we've been reading. Lord, it's our desire to, to love you and to love people. And uh, we are, as a, as a nation, many eyes are riveted on uh, the virus that, that, that the country is seeking to battle. And we do ask you, oh God, we ask you to bring healing. We ask you to, to clear out this virus and to uh, allow us to be restored into our uh, jobs and, and restore folks into health. We do pray for that. But Lord, we recognize that it's, it's a reminder of what is that life that we're being restored to? Is it a life of constant anxiety over the next thing that we have to face, the next you know, scare that we have to survive? Or is it a life of peace and joy rooted in your forgiveness? And so I ask, Lord, that you would remind us of that, settle us in that as your children. Lord, through this, let us not just be focused on how do we survive. Let us be focused, Lord, on how, how can we show the peace and the joy and the confidence and the compassion and the care of Jesus through this. Give us a heart for others. Help us to calm their fears and help us to point others to what we have found in you, Lord Jesus. And we lift up a few in our church family now. We pray for Laura LaFleur as she was taken to the hospital yesterday. And we thank you that it would appear she's coming home. We just pray that you would give her good rest at home while she awaits surgery in, in just a few days. Lord, we pray for Bob McQuarrie. He was in the hospital as well. And as he's home, we just pray that you would give an ease to his breathing and, and give a uh, a renewed strength there. Uh, Father, we, we pray for Bill Seneff. Uh, Bill is one of our dear church family members. He's the first one we're aware of who has been tested positive for the COVID-19. He and his wife, Rindy, are down in Florida. They were on vacation. So we just pray that you would allow him to uh, test negative and be able to get out of the hospital and just uh, be together once again with his dear wife. Father, uh, we pray for um, the Tar family, as Beth Tar, her uh, brother-in-law, passed away this morning. We pray for her sister Lois. Pray for us as a church, Lord. Oh Lord, just continue to mold us through this. Uh, cause us to value what you want us to value most. Let us be so uh, positioned to uh, continue in our mission, building strong lives in Jesus Christ, like trees firmly planted by streams of water. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for spending this time with me. Um, uh, and I uh, just want to remind you, www.ibclife.org. That's maybe where you're watching this. But if you, if you are, look around the website. The prayer sheet gets updated on there, and there's opportunities for you to, if you have the Church Center app on your cell phone, you can go right on there and, and connect with us and send us a prayer request. It comes right to me. Um, we're just, uh, we sent out a letter to the church. You should be getting it in a couple days, uh, just to be sure, because we're reaching many of you through emails and online, but we have dear folks in our church who don't have that kind of technology, and so uh, just be looking out for each other. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. We love you. And uh, I just pray God blesses you right where you are.